gone live yet, so we should just be a dance say we're live, but Hello everybody, how are you doing? We'll just give you a minute or two to get connected and everybody online. Today, Andrew is going to be our host and we have a very special guest who is also going to do a little chat to us all after uh, we do our normal chat show about we project that uh, he's involved in. So, um, how are you all doing today? Hopefully good. Did you have much snow last night? Where is it? Uh, did it interrupt you? It's certainly cold out there. It's freezing outside today. So I'm just waiting on. Did you see me on? I Andrew told me this. I didn't realize this. I was on the last show as one of the babies. Me <laughs> at school. I think it was P2 that picture was taken. So it's a long, long time ago. So it was. Yes, we've a lot, lots of people on. So I will, before we introduce it, I will just say. Hello Stevie, hello Chrissy, hello Dylan, hello Emma, Lauren, Wendy are all watching, they're all saying it's cold outside. Looking forward to hearing this interview. So Andrew, I'll pass over to you and Peter. Thank you, Cody. Good afternoon, Peter. Hello, Andrew. Nice to be here. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. No worries. I'll try not to be too sore on you. <laughs> so... Do you prefer sun or snow? Uh, I definitely prefer snow over sun, Andrew. Uh, love the snow, uh, and I, I always have. Um, I kind of shy away from the snow or from the sun, and I, I love it. I get invigorated when I see snow coming. So, yeah. Well, compared to myself, I prefer the sun. <laughs> See, I was the snow when I did it, Peter. I was the same as you. I picked the snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, the snow always brings up loads of memories for me of kind of bouncing around, throwing snowballs, going to school and throwing snowballs and things like that. And uh, I just, I love the crunching sound of snow under my feet. You know. <laughs> Number two, do you prefer funny films or scary films, and why? Uh, definitely funny films, right? So, uh, love funny films. My favorite is a is a movie called City Slickers, right? And it's a kind of a comedy. Uh, but these kind of middle aged men that go off on a holiday to pretend to be cowboys for a couple of weeks, <laughs> and uh, and it's one of my favorites. Um, so when I was a child, I, I love western movies. And I kind of always wanted to be a cowboy. I thought, oh, if only I could be a cowboy, even for the summer holidays, you know, like in between school and stuff, that yeah. would be amazing. And that's what happened in City Slickers. I go away on a holiday to be cowboys for a couple of weeks and have this epic adventure, which is what I kind of wanted as a child. So <laughs> anything that makes me laugh and brings back memories like that is, is a definite for me. I agree. And that, I second that one as well, because... I'm more into Western to sort of comedy films on the buses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can combine comedy and Western, that's that's a, a dead breaker for me. That's a definite. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is your favourite drink and why? Favourite drink? Yes. Um, favourite drink is mango juice. Right, mango juice. I've got this friend who lives in Florida and is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Very genuine, very dependable, a really, really, really good guy. And I went to visit him a couple of years ago and he had a mango tree in his garden. And and so he collects these things and then freezes them. And so every morning on, on that trip to visit him, we had kind of fresh, well not fresh, but you know, kind of fresh from his garden, mango juice and uh, a mango chunks every day. And it mm. was, um, yeah, it was a really, really special visit to a special friend and I have loads of great memories. So there you go. So, like most of my, like you're saying mango juice, what do you do, like mango chutney or something like that as well? <laughs> I do actually like mango chutney. I wouldn't have associated with drinking mango juice. Obviously, they're the same thing, but you know, it's a totally different. But yeah, I do actually like mango chutney. If 
funny, I found a jar of it in a cupboard. We were doing like a bit of a clear when the shopping arrived yesterday, kind of yeah. organizing the things. And there was a jar of mangled chutney at the back of the cupboard that we completely forgotten about. So oh, dear. Um, <laughs> isn't it funny how things happen with this timing? Yep. If you could be an animal, what would it be and why? Uh, it would be a wolf. Right. So, uh, and why? So a wolf, I think it's often misunderstood. A lot of people often think they're kind of lone animals, but they're quite pack oriented animals. You know, mm. quite family oriented and quite loyal to each other and quite protective of each other. But they're also quite carrying animals and I'm a bit like that as well. So I'm tall and I kind of prefer my own company. So it kind of can sometimes seem like a wee bit of a, a loner, but I also like my friends and my family. So I, I kind of go between both. And, uh, and there's been times when people have misunderstood that by thinking that I don't care when actually I'm quite a caring person. Not bad. Well, I know you're going to give us a few things about yourself after this yeah but this is the now question five mm. tell me something most people won't know about your about you um well most people won't know that well i'll, I'll give you three things if i'm going to be if i'm going to go with this and be it, be genuine about it yeah uh three things so one is i'm actually quite a shy person i know i go out and I do a lot of talks and presentations I'm, I'm quite shy and i kind of enjoy my own company at times um, but I have uh, dyslexia, which I spent a long time hiding, and I have a visual disability as well Oof. that uh, most people aren't going to notice or see. And uh, and I spent a, it took me a long time to get to acknowledge that within myself. Yes, uh, and I, I don't normally mention or discuss it or make a thing out of it. I just get on with things. But most people aren't going to know that about me. And if you're going to ask me genuine questions, I'm going to give you genuine answers. Yeah. What, what is your favorite color? Uh, well, I get blue and green. So blue and gray. I've got two favorite colors. And uh, and so green, uh, I love I love the outdoors, right? Uh, I love, love trees and I love hills. I used to do a lot of hill walking and hill climbing and stuff. So the green reminds me of nature and blue. I don't, I just, I like the color blue and I, I don't know why, but just as a child, my favorite color for t-shirts and things was blue. Well, I just noticed in, in the back of your video there, your curtains and your walls are mostly cream looking. <laughs> they are, they are. But I have blue in my shirt, right? And I've got a fleece that I took off because it was too warm. Green. And it's green. <laughs> Peter, I, I, picked, I picked turquoise, which is the green and blue mixed. Yeah, well, that's not far that was, off. That was what mine was as well. I, I, To be fair, I like both of those as well. Yeah, it's, it's not far that. off that fleece. Yeah, it's not far, far off, Peter. So yeah. that was what mine was. Or a really deep, deep purple. I like yeah. it as well. Yeah. If you could have any superpowers, what would it be and why? Um, That's a tricky question. Yeah, I know. And I had about three or four of them when I was thinking about these. I thought, why am I saying that? Why do I want that? Why do You're I want analyzing that? analyzing yourself, Peter. I was analyzing myself. <laughs> I thought I'd get in there quick before Andrew gets a good insight into my saying. Yeah. Um, I think it would be the power to see inside people's minds and see why are they doing what they're doing, right? And then to influence that and help them uh, feel joy and see joy and laughter all around them. So a little bit of like an illusionist type power uh, but it's more to help them see that as well as everything else they're saying, there's also little bits of joy out there. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and that's why to help people, there's so, 
look, there's so much out there that can distract us and there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of other things out in the world. And as well as all that, there's also good things happening, people doing nice things. There's also joy out there. And it's sometimes easy to lose sight of that. And I know mm -hmm. that can be a little bit cheesy, but I do, I do really believe it. Uh, and so if I can do a little bit more and if that power helped me do that a little bit more, I'd be quite happy. What's your reaction, then, Cody? The super one. I want it to be like invisible so I could hear and see what was going on. I was kind of being a bit nosy and wanting to, to be places that you maybe shouldn't be, that you could listen. But I, my answer later on to one of the questions, very similar to Peter's, to kind of get inside and understand the what was going on in people's minds. The one about, if you remember my celebrity one, it was I wanted to find out why people did what they did at certain times in history and that, and that was why, if you could understand what was going on in the mind, it may have allowed you to see why people make decisions that they make. Yeah, I, I had thought stuff. about the invisibility one as well, Cody. Yeah. No one of the ones that I analysed myself, and I thought, oh, would it really like that? Because it'd be all right at the start, but I know me personally, I'd end up feeling lonely after a while. That's true. <laughs> nobody, nobody could see me. It's all right. Nobody, the start, but <laughs> what if I get stuck in it? What if I get stuck being invisible and then nobody would ever see me? That is true. Although you could pretend like you could you could hide things and move stuff on people. It could, could be mischievous. <laughs> I, I'd have to wear a hat and a pair of glasses so somebody that would was it. There. <laughs> uh question number eight. What do you like most about yourself and why? Ooh, that's a bigger challenge. Um, what do I like most about myself? Do you know, I like that, um, you know that superpower thing? So I, yes. have a little, I have in my head, I've created this illusion in my own head, right? A wee story that tells me I have a superpower that I can say I'm good at looking beyond people's behavior, right? And not just stopping at the behavior, but trying to understand why they're doing what they're doing, mm. which allows me to be a very accepting person, right? And, and also a very compassionate person. So I like that about me, that I am uh, accepting of other people and their difference, right? And I appreciate the difference in other people. Uh, and it allows me then to uh, appreciate myself and be accepting of myself. And uh, and I think that's a good quality to have. That's a good that's a good characteristic to have. I think being accepting of uh, accepting and appreciating the difference in other people and in myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you, you suggest, Uncle, yourself? I mean, I thought I was quite honest and open to to hearing different opinions, and I usually don't say my way is right. I tend to listen, and whereas some people that you would chat to, their way is always right. You know, I would be more think and well, I like to think about stuff before I kind of give answers as well. Yeah. So that, as opposed to running straight in and saying it's this way or it's that way so mm. as me do you have any dislikes about yourself uh yes i do actually um so i have to acknowledge i can be judgmental and intolerant about judgmental and tolerant people <laughs> um I would love it if there was more tolerance in the world and there was less negative judgments thrown out at people. You know, we could appreciate the difference in each other that I don't need to be right. You don't need to be right. We can both be right mm -hmm. about many things and, and acknowledge that. Uh, and I see that when that, when there's not space for that, there's intolerance and there's judgment and that, 
that affects people from children all the way up, you know, at an individual and at a societal level. And, yeah. and if there's something I don't like about myself, it's that I react to that sometimes. And it, it annoys me. I get angry about it. And then I end up being the thing that I don't like. Um, so I have to, I do acknowledge that within myself. I, I don't like it. And I really try to work with it and try and channel it in some sort of healthy way, but I don't always mm -hmm. get it right. Well, this here is most, this here most people like what's coming up. That is what celebrity would you like to meet and why? What celebrity? That's a trick you want. Uh, yeah. So, I, do you know, I, I, there's nobody that jumps to mind that I'd like to meet them because of the celebrity that they are, of what we see. It's, it's the kind of the person behind that I'd really love to know. So, mm -hmm. um, Robin Williams, I would have loved to be able to meet him because I would love to have known what the real Robin Williams was. Yeah, this is dope, <laughs> Yes, that's yes. the person. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't Mrs. Doubtfire. The, the actor that did uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, and he also did Mork and Mindy, which is kind of more of my timeline, a long, long time ago, which was a classic comedy when I was growing up. And um, Flubbers. probably the earliest comedy that really had an impact on me that brought loads of laughter that was just about human beings and the complexity of being a human being but also how straightforward it is just to be two human beings treating each other as human beings i mean that that really left a mark on me as a child mm -hmm. and that, that that guy is a genius i'd love to know what he's like as a person because i see his genius but i don't you know He's a brilliant actor. Yeah, yeah. My celebrity I would have loved to meet would have been Gary Lightbody. Mm -hmm. From Man of Snow Patrol. Yeah. Well, that is probably more possible or more doable. That one might be achievable, Andrew. We might manage to sort something there at some point. I, I, I'm not in a mad rush to meet Robin Williams just yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll, I'd like to hold that one off as long as possible, but it would be nice to do at some point still, but not for a while yet. Mm. Right, last question, and then that'll be me, and then I'll hand it over to you, and let, you can let us know what. Yeah. If you had one wish, what would it be? That, that is also a hard one. Um, that, that's a challenge. I, had, I don't know that I have a good answer to that. All right? Yep. Um, I don't... That has stoked me. That I think that's the biggest challenge one, right? And I'll tell you why. Because I tend to focus on, on what's real, you know, the reality of people's lives, my life, <clears throat> trying to be in the moment and enjoy what's happening and and look slightly beyond, but not too far. Mm -hmm. um, if I had a wish, I think it would be that, uh, that people realize, right, that they have more control over their life and their thinking and more control over how they experience life than they sometimes understand. Because sometimes we get caught up in our own thought and our anxieties and things like that. And it can really take away from how much we enjoy life. You know, we get controlled by our emotions and our thinking. Uh, and that I think if people realize, hey, there's more to this than what I realize, mm -hmm. things can be different. Uh, you know, if the world woke up a bit more to that, I think that would be a good thing. But at the minute, 
I'm stretched to think of a wish because I tend not to have wish lists. That last one was a wee bit hard for you, Peter. It was. That was a real stretch. Um, I spent a large part of my life and my job and my career over the last 20 years looking right. at the reality of people's lives and, and how do we, what can we do to make things different or better or get more out of that or help mm -hmm. people see that their life can be different and, and what do we do? But, so to me, that's about reality and different, not that there's one reality, but there's different ways of looking at reality and, and not about getting caught up in fantasy. So that, yeah, that's been a real, that has taxed my brain. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart, for the, <laughs> for the unexpected uh, stump. And, and I know I said earlier, I'm a, generally a bit of a shy person. I'm not used to being stumped without something to say, you know. Um, so that, <laughs> thanks for the challenge, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is me, Peter. I will hand it over to you. Be you let us know what you're... Well, I mean, any any questions from the listeners or anything coming in? See, yeah, well, they've once... Uh, most people to that last answer, Peter, I will tell you, says um, for coronavirus to disappear or to be... Um, kind of things to return to normal, whatever normal may be, yeah. um, is what most say. One saying, hi, hello, um, from Archie. Um, Robin Williams, amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's what Dylan's saying. Um, sorry to borrow. Ben saying hello. And that. So, no, most of them are have, seem to be Fine. Other ones are most saying just hello to each of us, which is good. Uh, Gary saying, "I think I know you, Peter." <laughs> so, <laughs> Gary, you may well do. We'll, oh. we'll be about to find out. You may have worked in, with Peter in some other projects, yeah, um, yeah, or you may even have worked on this one. I'm not too sure. Oh. Um, so you may well, Gary, know Peter. Yeah, that may is well possible. Then. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out. So no, you're um you gave very good answers. You were probably one of our most honest ones, as say some of our um, other people, maybe just depend on what job they do, give different answers, shall we say. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it was it was good listening to to hear. And it, it's interesting because the questions are very simple. But the answer can be very complex for, from them, <laughs> they you know, are. depending. Because when you when you look at them, and I, I say our members came up with the questions. Yeah. Some, it's how you kind of well, what you would you like doing, or that, or some of the psychologists and that. How do you analyze what people kind of say there, and what does it actually mean? Yeah, absolutely. As well, I, I, which is interesting. Yeah, when I saw the list, I thought that's a genius set of questions. That's that's a great <laughs> one. Um, so congratulations and kudos to your listeners that came up with the questions. Um, I think they're a fantastic list. Um, and thanks to your listeners that just checked in there as well. And, and uh, they're warm, warm welcomes. I really appreciate that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would try to be honest, even if I don't yeah. know the answer. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, so Peter, you want to chat about another project or project you're involved in where some of our members may be able to help? Yes, yes. So um, I'm involved in a project through the university that I work with, Ulster University, and we're doing a, a survey uh, and we're looking at the impact that COVID has had on, on people's lives. And, um, and we've, we're doing that in partnership with uh, a number of other universities across Scotland, England, and Wales, and and a lot of uh, charities and service providers as well. Uh, a, a huge number of those. I don't want to name them. They know who they are, but I don't want to name them quite frankly in case I leave one out by mistake. Um, 
and I don't want to offend anybody because I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the support we've got and I don't want to cause offence unnecessarily. Um, but I mean, I, I think a good chunk of your listeners here will know that as well because you know the, the word's got out far and wide that this is happening and it's been fantastic, the response we've got. Um, and so the reason we're doing this is that we know you and I as humans, like we, we kind of know we're living here. We know COVID's having an impact on, on everyone's lives. It certainly had an impact on mine. And, and I don't know anyone that hasn't been impacted by it. And, and part of our response to that is also the, the restrictions that are in place and uh, you know, all the lockdowns and things. Like that. Everything about COVID from the infections to how our society has adapted to it is impacting on people's lives in different ways. And, and there are some, some people that are quite vocal about that about their views on COVID and there's others that aren't or don't get a chance to let their views be known. So their voice doesn't get heard. And we're trying to do something about that. And uh, so through the survey, we're trying to give voice to people who would not always be heard. Um, and we're trying to collect information, right? About how their lives have been affected by COVID. You know, one of the things that I often hear on the news is we're, we're, we're doing this in response to the science. It's, it's the science that's driving our decisions. You know, it's, it's the medical evidence, it's the, the research, we're being driven by the research. And, and so that's why it's important that people's voices and their experiences feed into that research that then is part of that decision-making process. And so we're doing a survey and uh, we're trying to get as many people as possible across Northern Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales to tell us how their lives, <clears throat> pardon me, have been affected by COVID and by the restriction, by the changes in their daily routine, you know, how often they get to contact their family and friends compared to before and, and what, what things have been difficult in that. And, and maybe even there's been some good things as well. You know, there have been changes that have been for the better. It wasn't planned, but it's worked out to be better. Those things we need to know about as well, because when we get back to something, whether it's the old normal or a new normal, you know, services, friends, other things um, that we have in our life, it's better if that's planned in advance, isn't it? And we know what it is we want. Um, so having that voice and feeding that information up to those people that make those decisions, I think is, is an important thing to do. So that's what we're doing. We've got a survey that we can do with people with learned disabilities themselves, and we've got one for carers or staff to complete as well. Okay, we so yeah. if some of our members, I know you have talked to some of them, or I believe you've talked to some of them already, but some of the other ones, um, how do they become part? How do they kind of influence that they can discuss with you? Because well, everything has changed. You know, we've had no base, we've had no shops open, everything can't see a doctor you can't go to the hospital type thing so yeah. all of that you're kind of wanting to gather yeah um to to help to to show how it's influenced or how it's affected people with a learning disability because as you say there's lots of government reports and lots of things but they may not look at uh these they, they tend to look more at businesses how businesses have been affected and how the the economy has happened and we do, we do get the, the death figures and all of those statistics, but maybe not the, the personal impact that it's That's actually right. having on, on people. So Yeah, and, it, and it's quite possible, Cody, that some some of those surveys, people with learned disabilities, may actually be you know, not included in those, yeah. you know, by, by design or not, but either way, they may not actually be included. And so this is something specifically for them. It's an opportunity that may not always be there so I think it's an important one you know 
So, so do we get our members just to to say they would like to take part, and then we'll pass details on? Is it do you do it via telephone, Peter, or is it on Zoom, or how do you how does this is the survey kind of conduct it? Well, if your if your uh, members will talk to a staff member, let them know, um, yeah. and they can contact us. I mean, your members can contact me directly. That's perfectly yeah. fine. But if they want some support or help with that as well, then if they go through your staff, that's a fantastic thing. Um, and we can do it by Zoom or over the phone. You know, some people they're a bit like me; they're a bit shy sometimes, so they want to they want a staff yeah. member there that they know, and that's brilliant. No problems at all. We can do it over Zoom. Um, you um, you have the if I remember if it's the same project. I know you you're involved in a number of projects. Is this the one that the Anne and the Ursula? have taken part in or is that another one um i don't know the, the name remember, to me but there's, other, there's other people involved Cody yeah. Super, you know. i know i i know i get, well that would have been before christmas i helped them to get on zoom and was kind of in the background so if you do want to take part let us know and we'll certainly swap details and that i see gary saying he would like to join in so we can get gary so you can either chat yourself we'll chat to you gary you can do it yourself, or if you want one of us on, um, then we can join as well and sit the way that we're doing now. You can do all the chatting, and we're just here to support you. It doesn't need to be me. It could be Simon, Tori, any of the our staff team can come on and take part. Uh, can we have a Zoom group chat? Yes, Emma, we, well, certainly put it in the group chats uh, with the details and that. So anybody that wants to take part, Peter is very keen. To hear from you, so it's very important that we get our voice out there and uh, we influence, or at least the people in power, kind of that we show them something that yeah. then we can't sit and say, nobody ever asks me any of this. So now is your chance to uh, to speak up and help uh, with the reports and that okay. that Peter's working on. Okay, and Cody, one other thing just to mention, I, I do appreciate that getting, you know, getting the opportunity to go to uh, go to meet friends and other things, other activities and the Zoom calls that you guys are running as well. It's really important and I don't want to detract from that as well. So we're really happy to work around people's schedules, you know, so that they don't lose out on the, the things that they do during yeah. the day. I think that's really important. So we're happy to meet morning, afternoon or evening, you know, uh, if it's after other Zoom calls and we don't want anybody missing out on anything. Uh, and we appreciate the time is valuable for many people. So we will work around your schedule to make sure that this is as possible as can be for anyone that wants to take part. Perfect. That's great, Peter. That's thank you for your time. I know you're a very busy man uh, up there. Andrew, thank you for being the host and no worries, uh, doing a great um, job there with Peter, as thank always. So, thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. No, no. Uh, thanks, Andrew. It's, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been stumped uh, for something to say. So uh, that last one caught me. It was a good challenge. And, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity. And thanks to your listeners and for the warm welcome as well and for their input. For Tim is saying, can we, can we tell you exactly, are we allowed to say how COVID has affected us? Yes, Emma, that's exactly what Peter's after. He wants to know all the bad stuff. He wants to know any good stuff because there has been some good things uh, has come out of it. The likes of this, this time last year, none of us would have been able to have done Zoom. We didn't know about Zoom. Uh, so we have learned a lot. I know we still like to meet face to face, but at the minute we have to use Zoom for the time being. So, yeah, any of you that want to take part, let us know. And we'll, we'll get in contact with Peter and sort, sort meetings for everybody. And then you can Do say exactly how you feel about it. All just the bad stuff, all the good stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> just before, just before we cut off, if I just wish everybody stay safe, two meters apart, and keep them hands washed, and see everybody very soon. Yes, hopefully we will. So good advice. Follow the government advice, which is do your social distancing, two metres, as Andrew was saying. Keep your hands clean, very important. Keep your hands clean. And if you can wear a mask, I know some of you can, some of you can't, but if you can, wear the mask where possible. So that's us finished for today. Two o'clock then, Zoom will be on. 
we don't finish we just move to the next project so at two o'clock today i th it's andrea will be taking the zoom uh so she'll chat to you and i say any of you that have any questions ask andrea about this and we'll certainly get all details so we will see you all very soon so thanks Thank you, Peter. thanks andrew bye-bye